British Council. And uh, Nikki and Courtney uh, contacted me shortly after the survey to ask uh, whether uh, they could come for a placement here as well. So I had them, had the pleasure of having them with a the placement here for a week in February, it was, I think. Is that right? February? January. January, January 2016, at the start of the year. And um, um, can I ask Nikki and Courtney to come here? So I will, um, something that we always um, wonder about as we ask every year in the Young Life and Time survey is um, whether we really capture what is important for young people's lives. And uh, uh, Nikki has agreed to talk a little bit with me about that before Courtney then will t uh, tell you a little bit about the British Council project and we see a little uh, YouTube video as well. So Nikki, when, 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 uh, will you come closer to the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> So when you, when you first got the, the survey question, obviously we don't tell people very much about it. So we, you know, we, we contacted you with a letter asking you whether you would mind taking part. So what was the feeling generally when you had the question in your hand? Um, well, I personally like answering questions about myself and my own opinions being heard. So I quite enjoyed it. And when I got the survey, it was something that I really wanted to do okay. because I like giving my opinion something. Okay, okay. So did you choose uh, the online or the uh, paper version then? Um, I chose the paper version. And why did you choose paper? Everybody thinks, and we've been taught, uh, asked several times at international conferences, okay. why on earth we produce paper versions of surveys? Whenever young people, everybody's online, everyone is doing, uh, and I think you did online, Courtney, yeah? I is that right? Yeah. All right, so why did you do paper? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was just because I got it through the letterbox. It was like, there's no point in going and trying to find to do it online okay. when it's just easier to do it okay. on paper. And what, what about the range of questions that we were asking? What did, what did you think when you were faced with questions on child sexual exploitation and shared education and sport and things like that? What do you think about that? Yeah, I think the range of questions were good. There was stuff that young people are never really asked about especially with community relations as well. Okay. I think growing up in Northern Ireland, we aren't asked enough, I don't think, about that sort of thing, so it was good. Okay, and then, then obviously you spent a week with me here, getting to know ARC much more <laughs> than you probably wished for. So um, what do you think, you know, as a young person, as I said, our aim is to, to, be, um, to, to produce data for everybody, including children and young people. So looking at all the things that we did, I know you had particular interest in the Kane website, the archive on the internet. Are there any things we can do better or differently, or is there anything that you found as a young person particularly attractive or interesting? Um, I'm not sure. Like you said, I really find the Kane interesting, mm -hmm. like the full database of information about the troubles and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Now next week we are starting to talk about the new service, so what do you think should go in? I think maybe more about mental health and young people okay. and how we feel if we can talk to people or the resources out there to do it. Okay, anything else? Um, don't think so, okay. I think pretty much covered everything. Yeah, okay, okay. Well thank you. Okay, so uh, I invite Courtney now to talk a bit about her experience of being involved in the British Council study, and then to finish off before the discussion, uh, we have a look at the, some of the other young people who took part in that. Okay. So, um, my name is Courtney, and I'm just going to talk about languages and internationalisation. Um, so, I'm a year 13 student at the Nola Collegiate in Bangor, and I'm studying for my ASs in German, French, Geography, and Business Studies. Um, studying two languages can be really difficult at times because it takes a lot of time and effort but personally I find it really beneficial to know that you can speak another language um, other than your mother tongue. Um, I find it really good that you can go to another country and understand um, what you can communicate with other people understand what is going on. For me, and I'm sure as well as other people, that it can be very useful for being informed about the rest of the world, for understanding different cultures and different ways of speaking. Um, speaking a different language can make you stand out from the crowd because it shows you can impressively speak a different language and have, you have better opportunities in the future. It also enhances your cognitive and analytical abilities because it involves a lot of mental exercise. Um, at least half of the world's population are bilingual 
and it is also estimated that up to 7,000 different languages are spoken around the world. So today I'm speaking to you, um, well it all began with the YLT survey when I received it through my postdoc, um, as well as many other 16 years old. I was, um, it came out of the blue because I've never heard of YLT before, but I filled out the survey online and ticked the box that I'd be interested in taking part in the focus group for the British Council. So I was thrilled to be invited to a focus group because I've, already, I've always wanted to take part in a focus group to experience what it's like. So um, I took part in the British Council focus group and met uh, different people from different schools and we had, there was a mixture of views um, on languages and internationalisation. So we discussed our individual ambitions and experiences in relation to languages both within and outside of school. Um, but also about different cultures in Northern Ireland. So we found that young people enjoy learning languages, however, they don't pick it for A-level because there's not, they don't have the opportunity to use their skills, so they see it as pointless to learn. This is because some skills don't offer um, trips abroad, and so therefore they, or they don't celebrate, um, ce ce celebrate festivals within schools such as European Day of Languages. So Therefore, they don't want to further their studies in a language because they won't actually experience using it. So personally, I believe it is important to offer opportunities to young people to travel abroad because they can gain so much by enhancing skills and capacities. In some schools, it, it is compulsory to study a language at GCSE level. However, there are more commonly being French, Spanish and German, um, but I think that there should be a better variety of languages offered such as Chinese or Italian. This is because more and more employees require specific language requirements as part of their application. So um, in the future, personally, I would like to travel to different countries and learn about different cultures. Um, and I would love to further my bilingual skills at university. And I hope that in the future, languages are just as important as they are today. So thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, Courtney and Nikki will be here as well for questions if you have any. Um, I want to add that Courtney was one of the few people who ever takes any interest in my German music. <laughs> so, so I was delighted in that. <laughs> she hasn't given me any feedback, though, mind you, but um, I may ask later. <laughs> okay, so in terms of the statistics, uh, there's only two slides before I show the video. Um, that was what the ambitions really were in terms of uh, young people who said they wanted to go abroad. We can see that a min majority 57% said they would be interested in going abroad to study. Okay, and 44% uh, said they would be interested in going abroad for an apprenticeship or an internship. And an even higher proportion said they would be interested in working abroad. So even though this may be dreamland for a lot of 16-year-olds when they asked about them, you can see that the ambitions are really high. And I think we need to take that into consideration. And as someone who has traveled and got stuck in the country where he's traveled to. <laughs> I know that uh, the, the benefits for young people to travel and experience other cultures, of course, are, are huge. Now, what about language learning? I mean, Courtney is one of the few students who take a lot of languages, four A-levels, uh, three languages. <laughs> um, so there's not very many who, who will be as well equipped in terms of speaking other languages as Courtney will be. But nevertheless, our statistics show that um, a third of all young living times respondents thought they would like to learn another language for study purposes. And again, 54% thought it was for work purposes and an even higher proportion felt that learning another language for traveling would be beneficial. Only 15% were the ones who said they only need English. Okay, and it was predominantly young people who were from rural areas who were much more likely to say they only need English. And they were not just ones from rural areas, they were specifically those who said they lived in farms in the countryside. Okay. So maybe they are the ones who know they have to step into their parents' footsteps to run the farm and that there's no prospect for them to go and, uh, and, and live elsewhere because they had responsibility at home. And as uh, so we also talked about, uh, females were much more likely to say that they would like to learn another language. 
Another issue which has come up and which was significant was that same-sex attracted young people were more likely to say they believe in Northern Ireland. Okay, and uh, that uh, replicates findings that we had in the past in our service when we asked them whether they wanted to go and whether they would come back. And the conclusion is, you know, that, that matches very well the findings that we had in previous surveys. And one of the possible conclusions is that what we have done a lot in terms of community relations, and uh, as our slides could she, uh, showed, we still have a, a long way to go in terms of making same-sex attracted young people welcome in Northern Ireland. And it may well be one of the reasons why they decide that they want to go and live abroad. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for to all the P7 children, young people, particularly the three young people who've made the journey today uh, and helped us with the research. And I want to finish off with uh, the little nice YouTube clip where you can see many more of our young people who took part in the survey and then we have time for questions. Everybody's going to speak English wherever you go, and it doesn't really matter about learning new new languages, which like isn't really a good mindset. If you go abroad, it'll just be more polite if you know that country's language. If I live over there, if I study over there, you need federal language to be able to communicate with the locals and get involved in what they're doing, right? It'd be nice if you were able to even say hello and how are you uh, here and there. In, in their language so that they don't have to feel pressurised to go and speak English. You wouldn't want this if we could speak more than language. Because I want to be a pilot, it'd be really helpful if I was travelling abroad and maybe I had to stay the night there. And it would just be nice for this and repeat it around. I don't want to live at home. Um, so I think it's like, it's a key skill. It's something I'm going to have to face. Like, there's so much in different countries and there's so much I want to experience because being here hasn't really opened my options. If it's a, country that doesn't speak your language, like if they don't speak English at all, they don't understand how you would approach getting a job. Languages are important because they help you to better understand English, um, for example, you know, going out of instructions and stuff. They just help you remember things. As you travel, you tend to learn more about yourself as well as the cultures you're based in, and you tend to find what really clicks with you. Some of the languages are really pretty, like Spanish is like just, it's a really elegant language, I don't think. I'm open because I'm friends with people that are different cultures like, and uh, I just, just this normal as us, you know what I mean, they just want a better life. I think they are accepting, like certain children. It's more open um, to different cultures, especially with like different festivals they have and the way they have that put into schools. A lot of people are open to languages. We're always offered three languages, which our parents were, so we've grown up a bit more used to it. Our generation is more prepared to travel and, you know, go outside and explore and find yourself. Half of us are, like, open to everyone. Maybe the older generation need to start figuring out, well, it's over now. Um, Okay, well, thank you very much for the British Council, in particular Claire over there who was involved in producing that video. Um, um, so that's it for today.